and then click here, you can see that you have attributed all the attributes to one block in the same file. So uh, if you think uh, like conceptually, we don't uh, pick all the attributes to one model. So for example, if we go to the If you go to this view, so we will select all the grids annotation item to be part of one block. All the rooms are part of another block and all the door elements, for example, I can, let's say like define this. Let's say like uh, I want to create a new block. I call it door. And then I call it, I call it a pick point based on the center. I can uh, select objects, then click enter, click open. So if I want to insert a block, double door flush panel. So I can insert it anywhere and then rotate it, or I can insert it here. and then modify my model accordingly. So uh, like, if you think about, if you explode it, it'll be a series of lines and arcs, uh, but like we don't group the door and the wall uh, to a particular group and unless if we want to produce the same content again and again. So this is uh, blocks and groups are a good uh, parametric feature that lets you minimize recreating the same content again and again. For example, if I don't, have the particular feature as block, what I would have to do is draw the same lines and arcs again here and here. So it would have it would have taken me like more time rather than using the block and inserting the model element here. So like you don't group or you can technically group all the attributes as a block, but you don't do it because you group it by the properties and then reuse it where you see it as fit. So I can write block and save this particular attribute to my cat library. And then if I use a different floor plan, I can insert the door to that particular feature. Thank you so much, Girish. Yeah. So is there any yeah. questions regarding the groups and blocks? We can take some five minutes pause to answer your questions if you have some before we proceed to the next topic for the day. Um, guys, any questions? Uh, so it's like a question from Surya Kant. It's like how to remove the hatch from the drawing. How to remove the hatch from the drawings, okay. For example, if we go to particular drawing and then I want to remove this hatch, it's as simple as clicking that and then you can uh, go and say that You can change hatch pattern here, or you can select the hatch and then click remove. Or click delete. So it will automatically delete the hatch for you. So you can control it in the view tab or like for example, if you select this and then you say that, yeah, remove, select objects. Or you can recreate the same. Or what you can do is hold it to here or delete it. So you can either use your keyboard to move around the hatch, increase it in size, or just use delete icon, it will vanish away. Or if, you, if you're using uh, the toolbar, it will let you pick points to add, like pick internal points to add the hatch, or it will let you, like once you add a hatch, it will let you to select deleted or 
modify it as you see fit. So, um, Girish? Yeah. So, there is like two more questions. Yeah, so sure. One question is from Marco. Uh, like, any invitation to block for selection of attributes? Uh, actually, Nageshwari, you are not audible. Your voice is breaking. Any limitation? Uh, yeah, I can hear you now. How about now? Yeah, yeah I can hear you now. Yeah. So it's like any block for selection of attributes. Do we have any limitation of group stop? Yeah, you like we can discuss that. Yeah, see, for example, uh, like. Uh, limitation in selecting the block is uh, for example uh, like you need uh, to specify your insertion point and you have to give a name so for example um, if you are using let's describe you in this drawing so yeah so if you have selected this particular uh, block this door has set in width and height and parameters when it appears in the plan view and the 3D view. So if you uh, look at it in the, uh, let's say if you want to change the height or the representation or the width of the door, uh, you might have to uh, like redefine a block. And what you have to do is have to change the parameters associated with this block and recreate a new block. So you can't, uh, so when we discuss a 3D CAD tool, uh, we cannot change the parameters of like we can we cannot have one block and different instances to the same block. So, for example, if you uh, look at a 3D CAD tool, you will have categories and you will have families and then groups and instances elements to associated with the families. Uh, families are like more relevant to the groups and blocks that we create here. So, what happens when we use categories is that. You, you, you load one particular family and then you can choose multiple instances of a family uh, to be modeled in your CAD window. But in uh, AutoCAD, the limitation that it is, is you will have to recreate a block with a like, different width and height. For example, let's say like we have defined a rectangle here in the dimension style the, as a floor plan. This is a particular block for me. So if I want to, uh, it, let's say like insert the basic geometry, if I have this particular block and if I want to increase it in size and then uh, to be, it cannot be part of the same block again. It will redefine the block definition of this particular block. So what will happen is I will have to redefine, copy this block redefine with a new name and then increase the length and width of the floor plan and place it as a new instance. So uh, I cannot have uh, like a block with a parametric feature and then to control it as a same uh, model element in my workspace, I will have to give it two different names. I cannot group it under the same name. So though you can uh, group certain attributes, you cannot uh, like group instances of like same purpose. So for example, uh, if it is a floor plan, you will have different groups for different uh, geometric parameters. So you cannot group uh, like, let's say like for example, uh, if you measure like here, this is uh, like 20 feet in width. If I want to make it 30 feet in width, I have to redefine a new geometry and then group it under a different floor plan, let's say floor plan B or floor plan C, and then reuse it when I see fit. I cannot re if I redefine this uh, definition to 25 feet and save it back to wherever this block is defined as 20 feet, it will uh, override the settings. So this could be one of the limitation. I cannot choose the instances from the definition. I will have to define the block to the geometry that it is uh, compared to other modeling elements or other 3D CAD tools.
Um, hey, uh, so one more question, Girish. Uh, yeah. It's um, can we use command array to recreate the respective block? Yes, you can. So, for example, uh, like you can use the command array to select any object, and then you can uh, provide certain increments to it, and then uh, you can recreate it. So, you can uh, when you select a block, or you can say like click array. You can uh, create an array of multiple objects in a pattern. So, if you select this object, and then click enter, and you can uh, select rectangular type you can see yeah you have created array or if you select close array this is from the object hexagon you have created a block hexagon uh, if you select this object and click array yeah you can see that this has created array of objects that you have selected in the window so block is nothing but it has been you write definition to group certain objects that you can use across your model space to minimize your modeling efforts. For example, the like, exact definition is the door. So when you model door, it is a series of lines and arcs. To mod match the width dimension and the way the door swings, you model the door and then you group it in terms of a block or a group. And then you redefine it where you see fit across your plan view so that you minimize your modeling efforts. You don't have to redraw the door again and again, and it is defined integrated as one object. I can snap it and move it where I see fit in my model. Um, thank you so much, Girish. So I think like, that's all of the questions for okay. now. Uh, okay. So, yeah, okay. so the next uh, topic that we are going to cover uh, is, from in today's session, is external references. So we discovered uh, the topics that lets us uh, produce the view settings or create groups or uh, let's say like blocks and groups to define the properties and then uh, write the definition to your local file that you can use it across uh, multiple locations in your uh, like project space or workspace in AutoCAD. So now, for now, we are going to discuss what are external references and why do we need external references uh, in in order to produce drawings so for example let's go to this particular feature extra design to drawing and save it and then we can close all the other files And then let's create a new drawing with AutoCAD template. So now, if you go to the Insert tab, you can see that you have create blocks or define attributes or manage attributes for block definition or a block editor. So you can access block and group either from the Home tab or you can select them from the uh, insert tab. Now, what we are going to do is uh, we have covered the block definition. Now we are going to attach or externally refer to the file that is saved to us in the local disk. So I'm going to insert the design to drawing file in my current drawing. Attachment and then relative path then click OK. And it's asked me to specify insertion point. Then I am going to select this insertion point. And then you can see that, yeah, my drawing has been attached as a single space. And then uh, it is externally referred. So I can save this as. external references and then this file is saved in my local disk and then you can see that the entire drawing is attached as the definition to the design to drawing phase 
you can see the drawing here. This drawing is externally referred to here. And then now I can create my drawing around this. I can draw border or line, boundary line, or I can move like the way this is located. can select and then move it orthogonally anywhere as a single entity without having to select all the objects. Then, if you see in insert tab, you have clip. Clip is nothing but you can clip a block or externally referenced file or viewport to specified boundary. So for example, if you say clip and then I just want to refer and then I say, okay, I'm cl clipping option, new boundary. And then I say my boundary is rectangular and then say, okay, I'm going to clip starting here to one particular room. So I can see only one room. And if I click control Z and then if I say, okay, clip and then select objects to clip new boundary and then say yeah, uh, rectangular and then i say okay i am seeing views between these two grids i can see only this two if i click escape click control c this vanishes so uh, clip is nothing but it lets you uh, snap to a particular region of externally referenced file that you want to refer to your uh, local definition or local disk file. So you can externally refer a file that is saved in your local space or in the A360 cloud feature. You can download it to your local disk or you can, for example, you can underlay layers. So you can, like for example, uh, like we don't have uh, underlay view layers. So if you have certain layers defined in your parent file, you can choose the layers to uh, control the visibilities. And then you can, uh, object snapping is enabled for objects all in the DWG format. And then you can select underlay attachments. So you can, like when you say clip, and then you say objects, and then new boundary, and then you say rectangular, you can see that you can snap to objects in your like referenced file. You are not selecting like this red line and green line are not objects in your parent file, but they are objects in the reference file. But still you can snap to the objects in the parent file and adjust. Adjust is nothing but it lets you to uh, adjust the visibility settings such as fade, contrast, brightness, monochrome settings of the image or the underlay. So you can select certain objects to uh, link to your uh, file or select it over the period of time to control the way the drawings are uh, like let's say like visible uh, in your drawings so why is external reference important so for example um, uh, if you are a civil engineer and if you are working as a transportation engineer or a hydraulics engineer so you might have to create a lot of civil plans using autocad and then when you create a lot of uh, plans, so uh, if you're working on certain pipe network or a road layout, so you might have already, uh, like there might be a lot of data available in database that gives you a network to the referenced file. Let's say like you have a series of layout of road network and then you are working on a particular uh, location of road you don't have to redraw the road layout what you need to do is you need to look for the uh, reference file that marks the layout of roads and then you link it to your file and then you start modeling what you wish to model in that particular road layout either you are working on a traffic sign or you are working on uh, locating uh, like say a uh, communicator lines located below that road in a particular section or you're working on some pothole design uh, like there are like multiple aspects to the design that you're working on using autocad but you don't have to uh, redraw recreate the same content time it again to uh, like expand the modeling time or the modeling effort so all you can do is externally refer certain files and then adjust the 
few settings or click the boundaries uh, such as like you can create uh, like select a block or select a section of road or referenced file to a specified boundary and then you can control your model space uh girish we do have a question here yeah uh, sure can we make correction in the drawings and can we uh, so it's like can we make correction in the drawings uh, which is like the external drawings yeah yeah you can make uh, correct like for example if you select this particular objects and then if you double click it you have the automatically select all the nested objects and then you can let's say like if i uh, close this save the external reference file and then say like i go to the design to draw it and then let's say i define a hatch to the walkway then click escape and then control s i make changes to the parent drawing then when i come here you can see that a tab has popped up that external reference file has changed a reference file has changed and many reloading if you click this you can see that the change is automatically reflected in your uh, current drawing you can change it and then you, this will be uh, like reflected in your current drawing thank you so much yeah. uh, you can rest in the session so external references, uh, as you can see, the changes can be uh, reflected on a real-time basis. So uh, if you are uh, working on, like for example, uh, let's say like uh, you are working in a CAD drawing as a, uh, like let's say like you are working on the foundation drawings and someone is working on the floor plan drawings and someone is working on adding details to the drawings, you can create an overall layout and then create external reference to all the other files. And then you can reference all the files to your drawings. So for example, I have created like overall layout. So let's say like I'm going to uh, start adding components to it. And then let's say like, okay, I'm adding a table to the room here. Let's say like there is a circular table uh, located in all the rooms. So I'm working on adding components to all the rooms. So you can add components here, like, like we can call it and we can call it table. And then choose it. Add detail elements to my drawing. And uh, if you save it, and then what you can do is uh, you can have this as parent drawing and someone you can create an overall drawing and then you can link this file and this file. So automatically you will have all the uh, components that are linked to one particular file. Someone might be working on foundation drawing, someone is working on the layout, someone is working on adding components to the drawing. So you can drop together all the files as one overall file. And if you select insert, you can edit reference okay so uh, as you can see uh, you can control if you are working on the overall layout and you wish that uh, someone who is working on your reference file doesn't change the overall layout such that like if most people are working on a common drawing and then you see that if someone changes uh, it's going to affect the entire project so you can lock your drawing so i have locked my parent drawing and you cannot edit it in the in place so the only way you can edit is you can open this particular file make changes to the drawing and make save it. So you can, it will ask that the external file has changed and then you can control, do you want to change it, reload it? And then you can click yes or no. 
And instead of accessing the external references from here, you can see that there is an orange icon. You can manage your external references from the file references. Uh, you can attach a drawing, you can refresh, it will reload the file, or you can like change path. For example, if you have changed your uh, location of the parent file in your local drive, you can change path. Or if you have uh, like attached, if you want to attach an image, let's say you have, uh, let's say like if I go to Let me see if I have any pictures saved. I don't have any pictures saved pictures. So yeah, this is fine. But if you have any image file that is saved to your uh, local disk, you can insert image. You can insert uh, drawings. You can insert a PDF. You can attach a point cloud. You can attach a coordination model. So it lets you uh, add so many external references, and then you can refresh. And you can uh, change path and you can clip to let's say like to control the boundary the boundary of the region that it appears in your external references uh, so just to be clear to control the visibility of an external reference and how to manage the drawings so for example if i uh, go to the layout tab and then i create a pdf of it and select Microsoft print to PDF. And let me select A3. And then the layout as extends. So my drawing orientation is landscape. And then if I click, Okay, so my print settings are not preset. So I'm just uh, like showing you how to set out the drawings to import a PDF. I can go to skill link and workshop and then say, DWG1. Click save. And if I go to external references, then if I click save, I wish to import a PDF. 